Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for coming. It has always been the goal of this organization to take tiny remote controlled cars and drive them far, farther afield into the real world than has ever been deemed possible, seeking fortune and fame. Our T-Curve rover has done exactly this, roaming up to a 10 minute walk from this very facility, admittedly with someone walking along behind just in case something went wrong. These grand and lofty achievements have buoyed our spirits, but the time has come to retire the T-Curve platform, which has achieved much. In its place, we have a successor, known by the name Solar Boy. Born out of months and months of dedication and hard work, the team, or, well, me, could not be prouder. As its name suggests, Solar Boy packs a solar power system. This will allow for missions of indefinite length, in which Solar Boy charges up its batteries during the day to explore at night. Solar Boy, with its 4G radio capability, should be able to navigate the wilderness, the outback, or any old suburb where we can happen to get a 4G radio signal. To support this wider ranging capability, we've also integrated GPS navigation, which should allow us to have a rough idea of which direction we're headed, and of course, where we've just been. Camera stabilization has also been included, with a new gimbal giving us full pan tilt capability, allowing us to look up and down and left and right as we aim to cross roads without being crushed by your neighbor's sports utility vehicle. And finally, in the event that Solar Boy is accosted by a member of the public, we've included a voice system, allowing Solar Boy to speak in its own words. Hello, I'm a family member. Whether or not this proves to be the right decision will be borne out in the coming months. The design of Solar Boy follows on from T-Curve, our last 4G rover. It uses the same chassis. However, the electronics have been completely overhauled from scratch to enable the new mission capabilities. The heart of the project is still the Raspberry Pi Zero. This has the primary goal of running the 4G internet connection that allows us to dial into the rover and drive it around. It also runs the camera system which allows us to see what Solar Boy sees. The Raspberry Pi is not the only key component of the system however. An Arduino Pro Micro has been installed to run the solar power system which makes Solar Boy so special. Due to the limitations of solar energy, it's not possible for us to run the Raspberry Pi and keep it online 24 hours a day because we would simply deplete our batteries far too quickly. Solar Boy's batteries at a full charge can probably only run the Raspberry Pi for about three to four hours at an absolute maximum. Instead, the Arduino Pro Micro powers up the Raspberry Pi for just five minutes on the hour, every hour. The Raspberry Pi will only stay on if it detects a connection from our home base, i.e. me. Otherwise, it powers the Raspberry Pi back down to save power when it detects that nobody is connected to the rover. The Arduino also has the important job of monitoring the GPS and the dual battery system. The GPS data is passed over a USB serial connection to the Raspberry Pi, where it's then passed by the rover software back to the base station. The base station software then passes that data through a text file to another piece of software that then queries Google Maps for Solar Boy's current location. I can then see on a map where the rover is, so I know where I'm going. This is very important, especially when navigating unfamiliar environments, but as you'll see in a later video of our first shakedown mission, I'm also perfectly capable of getting lost in my very own suburb. Very frustrating. The dual battery system is also a major upgrade over our last iteration of Rover. In the old Rover, once the batteries got down to about 7.5, 7.6 volts, and then we fired off the drive motor, the voltage would sag as you would expect from the current draw. Once it sagged below 7 volts, the 5 volt regulator running the Raspberry Pi would cut out, killing the internet connection and forcing us to wait for the Rover to reboot. Even though there was plenty of juice left in the batteries, it was simply not possible to use it without crashing the internet connection and the Raspberry Pi. In this new system, we actually have two batteries. We have a traction battery for running the motors and we have a separate logic battery for running the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino and all the intelligent subsystems. This is a good setup as it allows us to absolutely wring out the traction battery without losing connection and telemetry to the rover. Very useful. We also have the scrimped on batteries. After I wasted two weeks of my life and a lot of money buying different tools trying to solder aluminium tabs on lithium batteries, I gave up and then I just bought more batteries. So our traction battery is a two cell, 8,000 milliamp hour lithium battery and our main logic battery is a two cell, 8,000 amp hour lithium battery. I'm, they sound the same but they're actually from two different brands and one of them was a high voltage model which I now can't charge up because the 
Regardless of the details, we have 16,000 milliamp hours of storage split in half and half is... Regardless, we've got plenty of battery storage on board. It's a lot, that's good. To charge the batteries, we have a 20 watt solar panel hooked up to an MPPT controller, which helps us get the most efficiency out of the panel. This then charges the batteries directly. We don't worry about any fancy lithium stuff like charge rates or balancing the cells because we're charging it relatively slowly compared to the capacity of the packs. Instead, we just have an MPPT charger which charges the batteries up and cuts off at 8.4 volts. It seems to work fine in the, you know, moderate testing I've done so far. Will it fail in the field after a week? I guess we'll find out. Another major upgrade that we now have is sound. Thanks to a sound card installed into the Raspberry Pi, we can now listen to a microphone attached to the robot, and we can also send sound back through a speaker I attached on the front. This is really useful, and it took many, many hours of banging my head against the wall, watching the skin come off my forehead and blood splatter everywhere, until I finally found a G-Streamer pipe that actually worked to combine video and audio and send it back to me at the base station. Around about the same time, I talked to somebody that said, hey, what if you just run Skype and ring the robot and that'll handle the video and audio live for you anyway? They were some smart guys. We're, we're probably we're sticking with G-Streamer though. Regardless, it does work really, really well. And I can hear quite accurately what's going on on the platform. It's hard to overstate how much difference it actually makes being able to hear the robot while you're driving it, not just see the camera feed. When you just see the camera feed, you don't have a very good feel of how hard the motors are working or if you're stuck on anything. You can't listen out for problems, you can't listen out for cars or anything like that. With the microphone, you can hear if you're caught on a rock or if the gimbal is, you know, uh, banging around or tangled up in its own cables. It's pretty damn useful. It is also fun making the robot talk, although I am worried that the speaker isn't of particularly good quality and there's a lot of hum and noise getting to the amp, particularly when the 4G connection is running. This is bad because it means that even if I have the robot try to say that, yes, it is a friendly robot, people are just gonna hear a metallic screaming noise and not much else, and they're probably gonna run screaming or shoot at it or call the police, none of which would be a good result for me. Regardless though, this is the end result of a huge amount of work. I started the real upgrades back in January and it's now June. So that gives you an idea. I actually bought the solar panel thinking I'd have this done in 2016. It's been a while. Regardless, I'm very, very keen. My plan is to send this robot out in public, drive it somewhere and leave it there and let it charge up for a day or two or three. Then drive it some more then let it charge up for a few more days, and so on and so forth. And ideally, I want to share the ride with people online. However, what you might find when you watch our next video, which is going to be the shakedown mission we ran, there are some problems with that. It's very slow. I did a 1.4 kilometer mission as a shakedown, and not only did I get lost because the GPS was temporarily not working, it was incredibly boring. It's very, very slow. Not because the robot is slow, but because you can't drive quickly on a footpath with a robot half the size of the footpath without crashing all the time. Especially when you have approximately 400 to 500 milliseconds of lag. You can crawl along, but it still takes a very long time to get anywhere. On top of that, if you're not driving the robot, it's not very exciting. In fact, the only really exciting moments in the mission are times when I thought I accidentally saw someone or nearly crashed. So really, it puts us in a bad position because you'll be watching the videos hoping that everything goes wrong and I'll be hoping that everything goes right so that I still have a robot to play with and show you more missions with. If you can come up with a cool mission for this robot, something that doesn't involve it dying and would also be watchable, let me know. My current best plan is to throw it out into a country town somewhere and hop from city to city. But as it probably takes uh, roughly, you know, one three hour session to go two to three kilometers at best, Country towns are all about 10 kilometers apart at the minimum, so it's rough. Regardless, we'll figure it out. In any case, I think I've given you a fair idea of the coolness of this robot, which we can drive around over the internet, that can theoretically stay out there for as long as the sun keeps shining, which should be at least two or three more months, you know, given that it is 2020. Coming up next will be our shakedown video, and you can watch a real mission, and while I hope you like it, you may also find it very, very dry. If you have any idea on how to make it more interesting, maybe live streaming perhaps. Let me know what you think down in the comments of either this video or that one. For now, I'd like to say thank you for supporting the channel and this project in everything that it's trying to achieve. 
and I'd like to wish Solar Boy good luck when I leave it outside and hopefully it doesn't get rained on and break because I think the first time that I connect to it after it's been out in the wilderness for several days and it's still there and hasn't been stolen, <laughs> well, I fucking can't wait. Thank you for watching and until next time, TK out.